Greetings my fellow exiles, Tetiantel here. If you're playing a totem build and you want to make it perform better both offensive and defensive wise, then this video is for you. I'm gonna talk about several tricks for totems, which I noticed that almost nobody uses, but they significantly increase the damage and defenses of a totem build. So let's start on with Wave of Conviction Mines. If you play elemental damage totem builds, then one of the main ways of increasing your damage output is by applying exposure to enemies. Exposure is a debuff that lowers a particular elemental resistance on enemy, and there are not that many ways of applying exposure. You can use Frost Bomb, Scorching Ray or Wave of Conviction for that. All other sources of applying exposure on enemy only make them lose 10% of elemental resistance. While these skills do 25%, which is a relatively big damage increase, especially against bosses. Frostbomb skill can only apply Cold Exposure and Scorching Ray Fire Exposure, but both of these skills are really annoying to use because they don't apply exposure instantly, but only after a pretty noticeable delay. In that regard, Wave of Conviction is a superior skill, because it applies exposure instantly and can be used for any element. Yes, you can even use it for cold exposure. You just need to not level up the Wave of Conviction gem itself and link it to added cold damage support. Or just have a decent source of added cold damage to spells from your gear. That way the highest damage type would be cold and it will actually apply a cold exposure. The main problem with using Wave of Conviction with a totem build is that you can't apply exposure with it if you cast it yourself. Because if you use an Ancestral Bond Keystone, you can't do damage with self-cast skills. The solution to that would be using either Wave of Conviction totems, traps or mines. And I figured out that the best choice here is to use mines. The generic falling setup for Wave of Conviction mines is Wave of Conviction, High Impact Mine Support, Charged Mine Support and Swift Assembly. By using this falling, first you will apply 25% exposure. Second, you can generate Frenzy and Power Charges really fast. And third, you apply up to 30% chance to deal double damage to enemies around your mines. And let me tell you, getting Frenzy Charges on a spell totem build is not that easy. But if you use Charge Mines, then you will probably have almost 100% Frenzy Charges uptime on any boss fight. High Impact Mine Support lets your mines apply aura around them, which makes enemies have a chance to take double damage from any damage source. Since the default mine limit is 15, you can get up to 30% chance to deal double damage that way, which normally means 30% more damage, almost like getting another link to your main skill gem. You can opt out using Swift Assembly from that fall link, but that way you will generate Frenzy Charges slower and it will be harder to maintain the chance to deal double damage aura from mines. So overall using mines is far better than using traps or totems for Wave of Conviction exposure. Second tip would be using a 3 link decoy totem setup. This is a good advice not only for totem builds, but for any other build in the game. So if you link decoy totem to a multiple totem support and second win support, you can summon two decoy totems at once if you have two charges available. That way you have twice as much life on decoys before you need to resummon them. And it feels much more consistent when you try to distract bosses from attacking you or your damaging totems. Normally the downside of using decoys on your totem build is that you will have less damaging totems active because of the maximum totem limit. But if you play, for example, a Hierophant, then you probably already have 3 to 5 maximum totems, and using multiple totem support would be bad for your overall damage. This is why it is so good to use multiple totem support on Decoy Totem. You can proc the Ritual of Awakening Ascendancy Node, which is 6% more damage and some life and mana regeneration for you and your totems, and you don't lose damage by using a bad support gem for your spell totem. As you can see, here is my Stormburst Totem Hierophant, and he has 4 maximum totem summoned limit from passive tree and gear. But with a 3 link decoy, I can summon 6 totems in total, 4 Stormburst Totems and 2 decoys. And by the way, in Heist League GG added an alternative quality for decoy totem, which makes them to regenerate 20% of life per second, actually an insane amount of recovery. With that, decoys probably can only die to one shot and nothing else. 
Alright, we are moving to the next tip. So, have you thought about how much more damage are you getting from using a multiple totem support on a main totem skill? When it is better to use another support to not lose damage? Let's calculate it. For example, we have a limit of 3 totem summons at a time. Each one of them doing 100% damage, which is 300% in total. When we support it with multiple totems, it will be a total of 5 totems, each doing 80% of damage, so 400% in total. Some quick maths and we see that it is 33.3% more damage from that support. And that's a decent support gem for 5th or 6th link on a skill. Now here's the full spreadsheet. If you have 4 or more totem limits already, then it is probably not worth using multiple totem support because having only 20% more damage or even less is not that good for taking a whole link on a skill. Let's talk about attack totems now. Attack totems are any ballista totem or ancestral protector and war chief. While playing Ancestral Protector Champion, I figured out that having a chance to taunt on hit is really nice for a player's of ability. So on Champion Ascendancy there is a note called Conqueror, which gives you a 100% chance to taunt on hit. And apparently totems also benefit from that stat. What happens is totems constantly taunt every enemy to attack them, and enemies almost don't do damage to player. And then I found out that you can get chance to taunt for any ascendancy, not only champion. Just get 1 or 2 murderous eye jewels, which can roll up to 8% chance to taunt on hit with attacks. And an item level requirement is only 65, so it's pretty easy to get even on a leak start day. If your totems have even only 8% chance to taunt on hit, but good enough attack speed, they will constantly taunt enemies, including bosses, from one another. And one last thing that I find pretty useful. Ironwood Notable Anoint on an Amulet. This is the biggest source of toughness for totems in the game. It has totem life, huge amount of resistances and big physical damage reduction. When you play Ballista or Ancestor totems, you probably take this Notable anyway, because your overall skill tree is positioned in Duelist area. But if you play Spell Totem, there is no way you can travel that far away. Totem life ramps up with the gem level significantly, and while you don't have level 20 spell totem, they are pretty squishy. This is why early on I normally anoint Ironwood Notable on Amulet. Plus it uses very cheap oils. For only clear, amber and teal oil, your totems would die much much less. So these were the main tricks that you can use to improve totem playstyle. If you have any questions, leave them in comments or feel free to come to my Twitch stream and ask them live in chat, link is in description. That's it for now, I'm Tatiantel and I wish you the best of loot.